Hi guys and welcome to this, our very first look at the May update for Gran Turismo Sport. Of course the updates added the Le Mans track or the Circuit de la Sarf if you prefer. Of course there are two configurations, the one with chicanes and one without. Nine new cars have been added, so we have the Fiat 500F from 68, the Jaguar XJR9 from 88, the Lamborghini Mura P400 Bertone prototype from 1967, the Sauber Mercedes C9 from 89, the Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution 4 GSR from 96, which we'll be driving in just a moment. There's also the Nissan R92CP from, you guessed it, 92. The Renault Sport Megane 2011, the Renault Sport Clio RS220 EDC Trophy from 2016, and finally the Subaru BRZ or Z S from 2015. Elsewhere, we have three new events in the single player campaign. We have the Group 4 cars in the Beginner League, the World Hatchback Championship in the Amateur League, and the Lamborghini Cup in the Professional League. There's also uh, Dragon Trail Gardens track has been added to the circuit experience as well as some new scape spots for Le Mans, uh, the new brand central spots related to Porsche and the museum has been added to Dodge. But anyway that's enough of that, let's get stuck in to some of the new content on offer. Right okay so we're here at the Le Mans track in the Evo 4. Going to take part in a three lap race on the brakes and uh, ooh, narrowly avoiding the Mercedes there in front. So a little bit of a hurry moment early on. You see there's a crossbow behind looking uh, eager to get past me so I missed the gear change. I'm using the uh, T300 RS racing wheel. Whoa, okay. Another Kind of hairy moment there. This uh, Mercedes is driving a little bit too slowly for my liking, so we just squeeze past. And the crossbow as well, doing the same thing. We've got the Mustang GT ahead, we've got a R8 ahead of him, and we have a Lamborghini Mura, which actually would have been the car I'll be driving right now if it didn't cost about 15 million credits. And needless to say, uh, I didn't have that much. In fact, I only had about 50,000 at the time, so kind of had to settle for this Evo 4. I do like the Evo 4, to say. So far very nice to drive, very well balanced. Uh, it's not giving me very many issues at all. We've got uh, sports hard tyres on and uh, it's doing the business, put it that way. So closing in on the R8 ahead. It's the 4.2. Oh, and <laughs> going to hit uh, top gear pretty soon, I'd imagine 150, 155 from this beast. Uh, not, we're certainly not going to catch the Mura, I won't think, uh, ahead. I imagine that R8 will be chomping at the bit to get past me soon. Okay, so we've hit top gear. I love the uh, lighting in GT Sport, always impressive. Okay, just waiting now for this R8 to get back at me. I will not uh, resist. I'll let him pass see the Mura ahead catching the car pretty much right behind the car in front and again this R8 is just not uh, passing me is it so okay now it's becoming now it's getting there so it's finally got up to speed uh, the AI is on the professional setting okay so it's just about to pass there it goes Not, it doesn't seem to be moving on, does it? So it's probably topping at about 155 or something like that. As we get gingerly on the brakes, always it's tricky. Oh, yeah, just changed out the fall for a little too early there for the speed and the revs. And uh, very <laughs> messy overtake. In fact, I'm going to give that place back. Uh, okay, doesn't seem interested in passing me. Okay, so slow that uh, I'm not even going to bother now, but never mind. Uh, so we're in eighth place. And uh, one of three laps. And we're going to be catching this car in front, which I have no idea what it is. Uh, so far, so good. Nice driving uh, car, this. It feels very satisfying to drive, but you know, this is one area that we do enjoy in GT Sport is the handling of the cars in general. You know, it did win our best handling for 
Top 2018 BB Awards. And rightly so, really, because it is uh, a joy. It's very intuitive. It's one of those games, a bit like the Sutter Porter, really. It's, you can pick up immediately, and it just feels immediately intuitive. You know what you're doing with it. You know where you are with the cars, pretty much. Uh, I didn't actually like the implementation of traction control uh, at the beginning of GT Sport. I felt it was a little bit... You know, it was just imprecise. You didn't quite know whether where you were with it, uh, but they have made massive improvements since. Uh, still not quite like where I wanted it to be, but uh, it certainly has been improved. And, uh, you know, the vehicle audio is another area that it just seems to be behind the competition and, you know, that's no exception GT Sports as I struggle with the car through there. But they are improving and that's the key, isn't it? As long as we have improvement, I mean, I'd like to see a massive jump up but we just don't seem to be able to do that with Gran Turismo for whatever reason. GT7 will have something that's going to be sort of uh, matching or getting as close to matching the fantastic handling and of course the graphical representation as well which is fantastic. Okay so we're in sixth place, uh, one of the three laps, we're coming up to the latter stages of the first lap and uh, we'll be on the brakes here, third gear, and just to see what cars are in front, it's, uh, it's a GT40, I spy it and perhaps a Puntash, and there's an Aston, so some pretty awesome cars ahead. A big heavy Aston in front is going to be taking him in just a moment. But this is what I love about Gran Turismo, you have this eclectic mix of cars that you wouldn't necessarily see together, uh, which makes playing Gran Turismo such a joy, you know, driving close to these cars and just checking them out really is sort of half the fun for me. there and uh, that Kuntash in green not sure about the green colour I much prefer a yellow Kuntash and the Kuntash is actually one of the, my favourite cars to drive in uh, Assetto Corsa so we run a little bit wide there it looks like a Ferrari uh, 512BB ahead of the Kuntash as well so amazing mix of cars and you know this is why I love Gran Turismo so much. This is why I want to see some more road cars added. Uh, they are adding more and more, of course, and some really good ones at that. So it's really good to see. But um, you know, they've certainly got a long way to go until they have. Where is he on the left? Come off the power here. I'm not quite sure where that GT40 is. Is he trying to get in between us? I mean, what's going on here? There we go. Stay behind me. There we go. If you want to overtake me, you can on the left. Uh, we'll be topping out pretty soon in fifth gear. Uh, not sure if I mentioned it, but I am using the Frostmaster T300 RS wheel uh, with the TX Lever Edition racing rim. Okay, there they go on the left then. Oh, that, that cheesy 40 driver, pretty leery stuff. And uh, it seems like they're not moving on too much from me. I'm just topping out now about 150, and they don't seem to be getting away from me, which is quite surprising actually. Nice light effects. Uh, we have the Elin setting on here. And now we're going to be approaching this horrific braking void, set, which is pretty hairy. It's nice actually that they've rendered the full car in GT Sports. You know, often when you look behind you in games, you have sort of the camera viewpoint will be on the rear bumper, and you don't actually see any of the rear of the car, the window, etc. So it's really nice to see that. You don't often get that even in the, the most higher profile games, they do away with that. Uh, I guess uh, performance limitations are the reason. It just sort of takes you out of that immersion, so it's always nice to see a game that has this in place. How close it is between the top five now, wow. So the Quintash having to go on whatever car that is. And uh, not quite pulling it off, so he's had to tuck back in third place. There's a good racing ahead of me. Oh, the Ferrari leads the way then. It's just fantastic, isn't it, to race alongside these wonderful cars. A real sort of, uh, each and every one of them, well, pretty much has a uh, place in, in automotive history. Okay, little dab on the brakes. And then strongly on the brakes here. 
I can sometimes be guilty of uh, looking a bit too much at the cars and not on my racing line, uh, which is a bad habit I have. But then again, that's half the fun, isn't it, for me? Uh, check out this car. Now, listen to this contest. Yeah, not quite there, is it? The audio on that particular car, uh, which is a shame. Squeeze me out here, so I'm running out of room quickly. Uh, get over to the left. Okay, so not quite sure where he. Okay, he's still there, so I'm going to leave him room on the left. Keep on the right lane, as it were. Not quite sure is he going to have a move on the outside? No, he's tucked in behind me, so I can now put my foot down and have a look at catching this Ferrari, which has given up the first place. Uh, looks like we stayed uh, BMW ahead, actually. Friend wide here. <laughs> I've got to rescue it. Oh dear. Okay, good car. See, nicely well balanced the Evo 4. So I'm able to get out of trouble on the uh, sports hard tyres. Lovely to drive. Really enjoyed this so far. Uh, let us know if you are playing GT Sports updates and what sort of tracks, uh, sorry, what sort of cars you've been hammering around the Le Mans track. It would be nice to actually have bought a Le Mans race car, uh, one of the new ones. Uh, to race around here, but alas, never had enough funds. Okay, that Ferrari in front is actually sounding a lot better than the Countach. Listen to this. Actually, hear him going through the gears. Hear that gear change? Awesome. That's what we want more of in GT. Come on. Get it sorted, get that audio sorted. So off the accelerator through there on the brakes. And we're going to be closing. Is that a BMW? It is. Okay. I'm not quite sure uh, which year it's from because BMWs to me have always been very confusing in terms of models, makes, uh, you know, which uh, slight sort of changes every year. So, okay, it's the M4 Coupe, or Coupe, as we say. Uh, we're on the third lap. We've got about uh, about four minutes left of racing action here, uh, which I have thoroughly enjoyed. The Evo 4 does not disappoint. I have to say, very nice handling car, very neutral, very well balanced, and on the sports hard, it's uh, yeah, it's fantastic to drive. A little look behind me. We have a little bit of gap behind me there to the uh, Ferrari, which is surprising. Now let's see what this M4 can do straight line this is on professional AI settings so this was the hardest I could possibly put it on uh, but of course GT is notorious uh, for having slow AI yeah? okay so I'm just running alongside this BM and see what it can do there it goes so top out in the fifth gear again a big gap behind me so I'm expecting the Ferrari to sort of catch up at a fair rate not quite yet but in about 10 seconds or so That's uh, <laughs> the spoiler, the split in the spoiler is actually obscuring my viewpoint of the car behind. Uh, I don't believe the Evo 5 had that split, did it? I think it was just the Evo 4. My memory serves me. It is one of the defining features of the Evo 4, actually, that split uh, spoiler. Okay, look at that, the Ferrari now, my rear view there on my right. Having a very good look. Awesome to see these amazing cars in the mirrors. Just fantastic pieces of car history now on the brakes very gingerly and then much harder now see the marbles on the track and again beautiful lighting isn't it it has that real sort of uh, realistic tone as I forget to change up into fourth it cost me a few attempts there but yeah you have that nice realistic tone of lighting that uh, just gives GT Sports that bit of polish quite convinced about these trees around me but other than that uh, you know the real trick up sleeve for GT Sports is lighting which makes everything look better this is running on the standard PlayStation 4 as well I must add and uh, I don't have the HDR enabled for this race now then this turn very easy to get wrong 
Cooper have done for changing out second there. We're going to have a little go actually at this BMW, see if we can finish this race in first place. Why not? Always oh, very slow through there, isn't he? Look at that. Wow. It's almost like the AI is willing me on to win this. See the Ferrari behind is proving to be no match. Nice details on the car in front. You can see the sort of reflections. You see that menacing look, isn't it, in that black colour? Okay, so I'm just going to think about where I can make my move, perhaps here. Let's see. I'm going to come off the accelerator, chuck it in on the inside. Oh, no. <laughs> Not like that. Never mind. Okay, so that's probably first place well and truly gone now, but never mind. Uh, it's been thoroughly enjoyable to drive this Evo 4. Uh, Le Mans track of course never disappoints is it and it's nice to have a field of uh, you know, cars that are some of my favourites uh, which is always nice to see those cars racing around be nice if the audio was a little bit better of course but I must admit that Ferrari uh, 512 would sound pretty epic but anyway we're coming up to the last few turns on the race do let us know in the comments if you've been playing the new updates and what you make of it Uh, no doubt we'll have more content on GT Sport coming up shortly and of course we've got lots more to come on the crew too as well so do check that out anyway that's it for now for a look at the new update for GT Sports thanks for watching